ask you. It's been burning on my mind. Are you a morning person? Absolutely. Yeah. Why? Yeah. You have to be a morning person for for, for these practices. Uh, yeah, I mean, because of the way the schedule is, I mean, I set the schedule, so obviously yeah. I'm a morning person. Yeah. Um, but I just think it's good to get up and, and get to work, you know, and then while you're alert, fresh, and, and um, you know, already energized, and then you go to class, you probably get more out of the day, you know, and you come back and, and there's more time in the afternoon to, to get some extra work, and so. Year two establishing this, this defense, what's the progression been like for you? You know, seeing these guys come come together. I mean, Coach just spoke about how, you know, this is a player-run team. How, how are you seeing that right now? Yeah, you know, obviously the the recall from the guys that were here last season um, helps. You know, just the experience, knowing the whys within calls and what we're trying to get accomplished. Um, you know, the the emphasis has been on you know not giving up explosive plays. We were we were feast or famine a year ago, where you know we were either getting negative yards plays or giving up touchdowns. Um, and so just trying to harp on the details and the techniques and fundamentals to be able to put ourselves in good positions to make plays. Well, what were your takeaways from your scrimmage last Friday? Yeah, I mean, we, we just went live toward the end of practice. Um, you know, takeaways are these these guys love playing football. You know, there is no, I got no question about toughness or physicality or, or effort. Um, it was good to see some of the young guys make some plays. Um, you know, still got a lot of, a lot of technique and consistency uh, to improve. But you know, I'm, I like where we are. You know, halfway through spring ball. The seven practices in. Can you give us two or three positives, and maybe two or three concerns that remain? Yeah. Um, you know, positives have been just the we haven't had like a, a practice where there's been a big letdown from an energy um, and a an enthusiasm standpoint. Um, you know, guys have consistently improved. You know, the, some concerns are, you know, we got we got some vet guys that are making day one mistakes um, on routine plays, and we got to be able to make routine plays. You know, um, the other concern, you know, we because this team is is tough because they are physical, um, and because guys are competing for spots. Um, sometimes we got to understand that we're practicing against each other, and learn how to take care of each other with pads on and and being in. You know, a, a, a physical portion of practice doesn't mean, you know, I'm trying to clean up a teammate. You know, we, we, we're not playing against anybody right now. This is Purdue on Purdue. So you know, those are some areas we got to improve. Can you talk about how, you know, having this familiarity of full spring to, to really, you know, antiquate everybody? Can, can you, you know, go into the importance of that and how, how this is helping this team right now and how it's going to, you know, help? Yeah, you know, hopefully it, it pays dividends in the fall. You know, we got, I think, 102 guys on the roster right now. And we'll have 120 by fall camp. You know, I think this time last year we only had like 60 guys on the roster. So uh, we're having to do a lot of teaching uh, throughout the summer. Uh, so you got guys that are, are new. I think we brought in 27 guys at mid-year you know, to get those guys uh, inundated in the, the program and the standard of, of how we operate and getting them, you know, it, Having chemistry within the team, within the roster, getting to know each other. Um, you know, that's to me, that's how you win tight games is, is being able to rely on the guy next to you. And um, hopefully, having that spring, it'll build a lot of trust and respect within the locker room. KJ moved to middle linebacker. What's the value to have a guy who knows more than one position on that defensive end, particularly in the middle linebacker spot? Yeah, I think, you know, just his, the thought of moving him back there just to add, you know, more. Versatility, which in and of itself adds value for him personally, um, you know, also collectively as a team, you know, we can still put him on the outside to go rush the passer, and you know, he can sit in on the inside with him and, and Yanni on, on early downs, and um, I think that that competition has also made that room improve. You know, I think you know Yanni looks like a completely different player than he did a year ago, and I thought he, you know, had some spurts where he played some good football, and so uh, to have you know those two guys. Sort of take the reins back there, and, and and knowing that, you know, when need be, KJ can go get the quarterback uh, with the best of them. Uh, that, you know, hopefully that that versatility has a lot of value for us um, from a production standpoint in the fall. Any, any separation at receiver? Any guys standing out there? You know, there's a there's been a, a lot of guys that have made plays. Um, you know, you know, Swinsky's always steady Eddie. Um, 
you know, Tibbs has gotten a lot, a lot better and he's improved. You know, but you, like young guys, Armad Branch doesn't look like a freshman anymore. He's, he's explosive and, um, you know, is comfortable catching the ball. And then the, the new guys we brought in have, have really showed, you know, what we thought we were going to see on tape um, and, and, and then some. So I think we've definitely upgraded in, in that room um, as we should have. You know, we, we, that was a point of emphasis, you know, going into the, that, the slash recruiting cycle. Are you pretty healthy? We are pretty healthy. Um, you know, we're also being smart with guys. It's, you know, I'm, if you're thinking about it like the NFL and, and anymore, you kind of have to change your mind frame, you know, and not this ain't college football that, that it was 10 years ago. You know, it's a new day and age. So we, we are being smart with some guys. Um, you know, goal is to have guys healthy and, and feeling good and understanding what we're doing schematically uh, in the fall on Saturdays. And so, you know, I don't want to don't want to waste wear and tear on on spring ball with some of our some of our guys we're counting on. For your offense, how vital is it to have different archetypes of receivers? You know, you, you just got to be able to got to be able to win one on one matchups. Um, you know, it's good, it's good to have uh, like a basketball roster. You got your your quick guys. You got your tall guys. You got your guys that are good at blocking. You got your guys that are um, good with yak yards. You know, just to have some some um, like a broad range of skill set is has been nice to see and. Um, you know, I think HUD's doing a good job to get through his progressions right now and getting everybody an opportunity. Coach, when building this defense, what kind of guys were you looking for, you know, just either in the transfer portal? Yeah, we were, you know, we were, the positions of need, you know, we went and got outside backers. And so you want long guys that can hold the hold the point of contact on the edge that, that are also athletic enough to fold in the run game and, and drop in the pass coverage. Um, you know, we got corners, you know, that are – are longer, faster, um, you know, that that are, are good at playing man and, and being able to get up and, and press and, you know, cause some, um, cause some immediate competition with the offense. Um, so those are the type of guys we're, we're looking for, you know, big guys up front, fast guys on the on the edge, and uh, tough guys up the middle. Yeah, Coach, going back to the, the practice when you came there, why was it important for you to want to practice in the morning? I just think if, you, if the goal is – to give the players every opportunity to improve on and off the field. Um, to me, if you practice in the afternoon, then that means your your day starts academically usually at eight o'clock. Like, are you getting up and going to that class? Like this, you know, you got like I said, we got 27 guys at mid year. You know, uh, half of them are high school guys. They ain't mom's not at home to wake them up, get them to school. And so you you're worried about that. You're worried about them being tired in class. Um, and then by the time we get them, it's the afternoon and then our day is done at 6 30 7 o'clock well after that day's done they're they're going home and hopefully going to bed but they might be going to get on call of duty or fortnite or, or 2k or madden or whatever um so i just think you you lose times to to be able to hone in on your craft whereas if you go in the morning you know we our team meeting starts at seven so everybody has to be checked in by 6 30 so i know they're up i know they're engaged um you know we're running team meeting they're they're active, they're coherent. Um, so we get them through the physical aspect of the day done by you know, 10, 45, 11 o'clock. Now I know that they're alert and are going to class. Um, and so they go to class, go to study hall, and now all of a sudden their, their day's over at 5.36. Well, now they're not tired from going through a whole day. And so usually they, they'll come back and do extra film sessions or extra uh, rehab or extra work in the, in the weight room. So I just think it gives us, those guys a chance to, to maximize the time spent. You know, it's tough to juggle that academically to get schedules to work. No, our, I mean, we're doing better academically than they have here in a long time. So uh, it's, it's definitely been beneficial. Is there something to success with other programs bleeding into the athletic department? Obviously, basketball's in the Final Four right now. Yeah, I think the momentum is, is awesome. And it, and it just shows you um, what kind of potential Purdue has from an athletic standpoint. Um, you know, from our perspective, like if, if basketball Duke can do it, like why, why can't we do it? Um, and so, you know, I, obviously this is a, a tight knit community in and of itself, and, and Purdue is is one of, of no egos and and everybody, you know, being on the same page, and it is like a brotherhood. And so, you know, it's been awesome to see uh, Painter and those guys um, go to work the way they've gone to work.
what's the thing that you're hoping your players are, are taking away from the f- from the Final Four run that the, that the men's basketball team is on right now? Yeah, just that it's, it's possible, and it's possible to do it at Purdue. Um, so if you you know if you if you play the right way, you work the right way, and um, and have no egos and you know, are a team first, and you can accomplish the everything you want to accomplish right here. Where are you going to watch the game Saturday? Where am I going to watch it? Hopefully in Phoenix. <laughs>